Senate Republicans and House Democrats have now released their K-12 education funding proposals. Can you provide some insight on these proposals and share what you believe a successful comprehensive solution to McCleary would look like? Sure, and I totally understand why it can be a little confusing for people to follow everything that's been going on. You keep hearing about McCleary and, and what is that. Well, we basically, we do need to come up with uh, full funding for education, and part of that is being driven by the courts who have, uh, they kind of laid out two requirements. One is that we adequately fund education, uh, and what they're using for the guideline of what is adequate is actually legislation. We had uh, several years ago a bill that laid out a prototypical school model. That prototypical school model says, okay, this is how many teachers a school should have, how many librarians, and et cetera, et cetera. So it kind of makes a, a cookie cutter formula for funding education. And the second piece is that the, uh, the court said that we need to not uh, rely on local levies for education because we know levies fail and so on, and so they're not a reliable funding source. So that's, that kind of set the background for what we need to accomplish. What I saw is that the governor had a proposal that uh, it really wasn't, I don't think it was a complete proposal, it was basically just uh, here's the problem, we need to have this much more in tax increases and so on. It was billions of dollars, a, a huge amount of money. Uh, the Democrat proposal uh, that is very similar to that in that uh, each of those kind of satisfying a wish list. It's like everybody wants this, so you can have all of these things and it's going to cost a whole lot of money. But it's kind of incomplete, and the reason I say that is because I don't think that anybody was willing to actually vote on those taxes. We realized they would be highly unpopular, and so uh, it's just kind of a um, just kind of satisfying everybody, but not really being complete. Now, I did see something very promising, and that is the Senate Republican proposal, which uh, changes the way we fund things. Instead of the prototypical school model, it says we're going to fund an amount per student. Uh, and it's uh, it's a it large amount per student. We're talking thirteen, fourteen thousand uh, dollars per kid, which uh, I think people would be quite satisfied in that uh, precise amount. It does a lot of good things. Um, for example, um, special needs kids they get uh, there's more money allocated for them. Uh, highly capable kids, uh, kids that uh, don't speak English. All of those things are factored into it that I think would do an excellent job. It's about one. $1.4 billion extra for education, and it doesn't rely on uh, these new sources of revenue. So that's encouraging also. Uh, now, there's, there, I can see why uh, some folks want uh, you know, the governor's or the, uh, the Democrat plan because it's everything they wanted, but this one's a more practical solution, I think, that uh, is more living within our means. And so in addition, uh, it actually increases teacher pay quite a bit, and especially for new teachers, which is where we, we need to beef that up so that we, get, uh, we can attract those uh, new quality teachers. Uh, it's really just a start in negotiations, so uh, I wouldn't get too excited about particular elements of things. Uh, but uh, as we negotiate things, one an another thing is that uh, it has a referendum clause, and so that when we're all done, it should go to a vote of the people. So the people can decide if we've really done a good job in coming up with the solution. I personally think that uh, my constituents in Auburn and Kent uh, school districts uh, will be happy with it for a couple of reasons. One is that it increases the amount of money coming to the school districts. Uh, I, what, the numbers I saw was about a million and a half dollars more for Auburn and actually $15 million for Kent. And the average property owner will pay two to three hundred dollars less in property taxes. It's hard to argue with that. I think uh, we're on our way to uh, solving our funding uh, uh, problem, and I think it's a positive sign we'll get it done on time by the end of our 105-day session. You are now a member of the House Rules Committee. Talk a little bit about what the committee does and the importance of the work you'll be doing as we approach policy cutoff on February 17th. Well, the Rules Committee is uh, it, its kind of a mystery to a lot of people because uh, bills get voted out of their committees and then they go to rules before they get pulled to the floor. And how that process works, a lot of people don't know. Uh, it's really fairly simple. Uh, I had my first rules meeting the other day and we went around the table and each member of the Rules Committee was able to pull one bill uh, from the list of ones that were passed out of committee 
to the floor calendar. So now it is uh, in the position that it can be voted on on the floor. There is no guarantee that it will still happen, but uh, it was interesting to see that process and I realized how important it is because there are a lot of bills die in rules committee just because we can run out of time. Uh, so uh, I take that responsibility very seriously and I'm, I'm really just honored to be on that.